Hey everyone, so last week I held a poll on my community tab asking if you all would want me to update my older builds that were done post patch 13. While it's been some time, I've been adjusting and tuning some of my themed builds, and I thought it would be fitting to start out with the first build that I ever made on this channel. Now with the latest patch refining the veteran's talent tree, and with the previous patch giving us keystone abilities, I thought it would be only right to share what I've enjoyed most while using the same exact loadout I used a few months ago. So let me briefly remind you, starting with my melee weapon of choice. I chose to use the Mark VI Power Sword once again, and I rolled my perks to do more damage to Maniacs and Carapist Armored Enemies. Along with that, I have two blessings that I find to be incredible on this weapon. The first one being Power Cycler, which grants me up to two extra chain energized hits and Brutal Momentum for the extra weak spot damage. Another great blessing that you can swap out for Brutal Momentum is Rampage. Since it bumps your power behind every cleave, it can absolutely demolish droves of Horde enemies very easily. I prefer Brutal Momentum for the ability to ignore the enemy's hit mass, allowing my cleave to overpenetrate through multiple enemies, while doing more damage to their weak spot as well. Now for the main attraction, once again returning to the spotlight, is my god rolled Mark III Hellbore Las Gun. While I know this is more of a carbine rifle and not much more of a sniper, it still smacks like a 50 cal, so I'm going to refer to it as my last sniper. For this weapon, I chose to have my perks deal more damage to maniacs and unyielding enemies. This weapon can already take down any ogren sized enemy in just a few shots, and what makes it even better is the enormous ammo pool that you'll have. To have this qualify as a god roll, you'll actually want the dump stat to be ammo, since you'll have no need to really pick up any when you see our passives. As for my blessings, I once again have Surgical which bumps the crit chance to 10% every third of a second, and Onslaught, which allows for more shots downrange at a rapid pace. Now for my curios, I did swap around some things. This time around, I went with 3 max health curios, each with boost to health and toughness, as well as some combat ability regen and some stamina regen. For the talent tree, I wanted to shake things up a bit. Before, I opted in for using executioner stance for a lot of ability regen, but it didn't give my team all that much. So this time around, I decided to feed into the power behind the hellbore and provide more for my team. Starting off with my main ability, voice of command. This is an obvious choice now since we have so many different ways of earning this back easily. Not only that, but I can save myself and my teammates in a pinch by replenishing our toughness and staggering all the enemies around us. As for my modifiers, I went with a few different ones here. First off, I went with Duty and Honor as it's a great way to make sure everyone is safe by giving them an overshield of toughness. Next, I grabbed for the Emperor, which gives everyone a coherency plus 10% damage for both melee and range damage. And finally, I grabbed Marksman for myself. This applies plus 20% power behind every weak spot hit for 10 seconds. This can help us take out any range threats really quickly, as well as assist anyone up close who might be having trouble with an elite. Now for my blitz this time, I went with crack grenades. For times when packs of crushers push in, or some bulwark gets way too close, the crack grenades have a special place in every veteran's arsenal. The aura I went with this time was fire team for the bonus damage that I can give myself and allies in coherency. Since we want to be able to kill everything in a shot or two, this will help guide us in that direction. Now for my keystone, I tested out all of them, and I settled with focus target as that's the one I can rely on most. Tagging an enemy will apply a target over their head and they'll take 4% additional damage for each stack that I apply. To make sure that we can get the most out of this keystone, we're going to take all of the modifiers, starting with focused fire. This will give us 3 extra stacks that we can apply to any target, also bumping up the damage to a maximum of 32%. Next up, we have redirect fire. This procs whenever our tagged enemy is killed, and this will give everyone a coherency plus 1.5% damage for each stack that I applied, and it will last up to 10 seconds. If you keep applying stacks to other enemies while this buff is being applied to you, the boost in damage can stay for much longer, just as long as you're killing those enemies that you tagged as well. You won't even need max stacks after the first application. They should remain at 8 stacks upon killing the next tag target. And finally, with target down, we can replenish 5% toughness and stamina for each stack applied to a down target. This gives a ton of breathing room since focus targets become priority for the whole team, and it helps everyone if they kill that tag target. Now let's talk about the passives that I went with. This is going to be somewhat of a major shift away from where I went with the original build. I used some passes back then that helped me in specific scenarios, but after playing with this build, I noticed a lot of them can be reworked to help everyone while also giving me a bit more room to push out more damage. Starting off with one that I felt was almost mandatory for more damage output, bring it down. This passive allows us to do 20% more damage to any Ogren enemy variants, as well as monstrosities. If you throw your stacks at focus target and you're a good enough shot, applying crits and hitting headshots can melt bosses very easily. Since you already have high damage with the Hellbore, sit in the backline and aim carefully. Close Order Drill was another passive that I used before, because despite using this build to focus on ranged targets, I always find myself fighting close to my team. This keeps us alive and well while being able to be aggressive with our team. Confirm Kill is another passive that I used before. 
This is one of my favorite passes for the vet simply because of how useful it can be during orc missions. A majority of the enemy types that you'll fight in those missions are elites and specialists, and with this passive, you'll be constantly replenishing your toughness and then some. I took covering fire for my teammates. Since the highlight of this build is focused on my Hellboard's performance, I want to be able to help my team in any way that I can. This passive keeps the engagement focused on the most optimal way to keep my team alive. Tracking your teammates who are fighting in the front lines and shooting any enemy that's within 5 meters of them will give them toughness back and amp up their base damage too. Since I wanted to kill most elites and specialists with only a few shots, I opted in for taking Deadshot. Again, if you're a good enough shot, this should be very easy to proc. I like not having sway on my weapon when I'm trying to connect shots down on multiple targets, and the crit chance is another sweet bonus that you can gain. The technique here that I use is not to hold your shots for too long. If you're applying your stacks of focus target, then you'll regen your stamina quite quickly. Demolition stockpile isn't even needed, but I like not having to look for nades whenever packs of crushers are pursuing me or my teammates. Having that 60 second cooldown to get them back just allows me to throw them whenever I need. I took Determined for the suppression immunity as I also hate being suppressed by Gunners and Reapers. This can save your butt if things get really bad since you won't be stunlocked. Look for an advantageous spot and take out the targets with cover. It doesn't seem needed but fully loaded is on the way down for more passes that we want. So the 25% more ammo isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just means we probably won't need to ever pick up ammo. Since we have close order drill to keep our damage reduction up, whenever we're playing close to our team, I have Iron Will to help keep that up for another 50% damage reduction whenever we're above 75% toughness. This class should be regenerating toughness almost always with the abilities that I chose, and this is just another way to keep the engagement from going south for us. Precision Strikes goes towards both weapons. You should always be aiming for headshots whenever you can, as the 30% weak spot damage is insanely good. This mixed with the crit chance that we get from Deadshot can take chunks off of monstrosities with ease. Shock Trooper isn't needed either, but I've been seeing a lot of greedy players. I don't like having to look for ammo, nor do I want others worrying about me. I like being rewarded by taking out enemies and not having to reload as often. The best part is that Surgical can be really helpful at maximum stacks, since it'll give us a 100% chance of hitting a crit anywhere. I took Superiority Complex again for the damage output towards elite enemies. Since there are so many in the game, I felt like this passive covers the bases for a majority of the enemies that normally give everyone issues. And lastly, I took Tactical Awareness as this is yet again another great passive. Since the Hellboar should normally kill specialists within the first shot, we can constantly keep using our ability to keep everyone healthy and alive. Having Voice of Command readily available to us whenever we want is pretty great, not to mention 6 seconds reduced per kill is a huge gap of time in Auric missions. Since the majority of the enemies are already going to be specialist anyway, this is incredibly easy to constantly proc. Now with all of that, my operative modifiers give us some minor buffs in health, range damage, stamina, suppression, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. I didn't feel like the nodes were wasted here, nor are they too drastic. I wanted to focus more on keeping my toughness high since we're going to have damage reduction that's affected by that. This build has a high focus in damage and support. The team should rely on you to kill bigger threats and to keep them alive. You can be a true beacon of superior firepower by maintaining a focus on your target acquisition and your teammates health. No one should be left alone, but if they are, try your best to provide covering fire and suppression. I hope you all enjoyed this updated version of the last sniper build. This was the first ever build that I posted here on YouTube for Darktide. And it actually sparked my interest in creating builds for a community that appreciates my passion for it. As always, my playstyle will differ from yours, so adjust anything that you like, and let me know in the comments what works for you. I'm sure I'll eventually have to update most of these builds again, so every suggestion and recommendation counts. Anyways, let me begin working on the next build for you all, but until next time, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the rest of the match.
A million more like that, baby. And it might just mean something.
Get your gun out! Reloading! 
Grenade out! Right! 